Hola, queridos amantes del cine y en especial del terror. Como muchos de ustedes saben, este octubre el cine tendrá un acontecimiento histórico porque después de más de cuatro décadas, la saga de Halloween llegará a su fin. Esta icónica franquicia creada por John Carpenter en 1978 y reinventada en el 2018 por el productor Jason Blum y el director David Gordon Green concluirá con Halloween, la noche final. En esta película, Laurie tendrá el enfrentamiento definitivo con el asesino Michael Myers por eso me complace poder entrevistar a Jamie Lee Curtis, un ícono de Hollywood que por 44 años ha interpretado a Laurie Stroll, el personaje femenino más emblemático de una saga de terror. Jamie, welcome to Mexico and thank you so much for this interview. Well, thank you for having me, Lolita. I am very very happy to be here with you. I admire you and I feel like we have a lot in common. Let's start with a simple que question. What does Laurie Strode mean to you? Laurie Strode means my entire life. Everything good in my life comes from Laurie Strode. My uh, creative career, my opportunities as an actress began with Laurie Strode. Um, I met my husband, weirdly enough, through Laurie Strode. <laughs> um, and all the good things that have come from my life. I have children. Um, I have now, I'm a producer. I'm now, all of it is because of Laurie Strode and the Halloween movies. So I owe my entire life to, to that young woman who was 17 years old in the movie when she was first attacked by this, this monster. What would you say the, the Halloween saga is really about? What's the heart of the whole story? The same thing that has kept you here doing what you do, Lolita, is me. The longevity, the perseverance through difficult times, the representation of a woman being able to endure hardship, Um, trials and tribulations um, and an ability to be able to still, still sit here in the seat and exist with my, uh, our own minds and our own ideas and that throughout all that history that we have emerged strong, smart, we are both mothers, we are carrying on with great respect for ourselves and for our, our colleagues. I see in you the same thing I see in me, which is this beautiful longevity. In this film, we'll see the final confrontation between Laurie and Michael. Yes. Could you explain with as much detail as possible, <laughs> what did you experience after you shot that scene? I was very bloody. I was very battered and very bruised, but it was important to me that since this entire trilogy, 44 years of, of portraying Laurie Strode and this conflict with Michael, um, it was my directive to David Gordon Green and the creative team that that final fight be brutal because real violence is brutal, it's brutal, it's awful. Yes. Awful to see, a real brawl, a real fight. Th th it, there's, a, there's, a, there's a fierceness to it and a, and a brutality to it that is uncomfortable. And in movie fights, it all looks a little planned. No matter how good it is, it's still, It just looks fake to me. Uh -huh. And my directive to the, to the team was, if this entire venture is predicated on a final collision between Laurie Strode and Michael Myers, let's go for it. Because Halloween Ends is the conclusion of the saga, 
Yes. It's more than a movie. <laughs> I believe it's a cinematic event. It's the type of film that needs to be experienced in a movie theater. I want to know what is it that you love so much about the cinema experience and why do you think it's important nowadays? I now know why you're Lolita, the famous Lolita, because of the depth of your questions. You've asked the most important question, what is it about that experience in a movie theater? What is it, that collective experience that in a, in a comedy, that collective experience of laughter? I've been in a couple big comedies, A Fish Called Wanda, True Lies. The laughter, the contagious laughter that happens when people around you are laughing. You laugh louder, you laugh harder. In horror movies, you fear more, you, you scream louder when other people are sharing the same experience. It is unlike anything else. And of course, movies were designed to be seen in theaters. They were designed, they are made. Every filmmaker working today has designed that movie for a big screen, sound design for a big theater, all of the experiences. But the reality is that the invention of streaming has allowed people who might never go to the movies, for whatever reason, to have the same experience, it's just in their homes. So do I prefer the movies? Absolutely. There's no one ever that you're gonna meet is gonna say they prefer to watch a big spectacle on a little screen or your phone. In films, to have a great hero, you need a great villain. <laughs> Why do you think Michael Myers has fascinated so many generations for over 40 years. What makes him special? The mask that he wears is white. Uh -huh. And he never speaks. No oh. one has ever heard Michael Myers speak. In oh. all the 44 years of Michael Myers, he doesn't speak. And obviously other people have, have come up with this theory. It's not necessarily mine, but I'm gonna make it sound like it's mine. Um, all of your fears, whatever scares you, you get to impose on Michael Myers. His enigma, his enigmatic non-facial expression allows you to put into him your fear. And the fact that he doesn't speak adds to it. So I don't know, it's, it's, it's like he's a blank canvas mm -hmm. and you get to impose on it what scares you. I discovered that you and I have something in common. I knew we, it. <laughs> we both have our own foundations yes. to help others. And I can tell you that journalism has given me great satisfaction, but I realized that helping others is a deeper way of happiness. Yes. That's the reason I created more than 30 years ago, almost 40, my foundation called Solo Por Ayudar. I'm, ta I'm telling you this because I know you're really passionate about altruism. Mm. I want to know what has altruism given you that your profession as an actress hasn't? My mother was involved early on, even though my mother was a big movie star, Janet Lee, um, mm. who... Mm was my mommy. Oh. And, you know, she was involved in charity work my whole life. I watched her do that. I also grew up with Maria Shriver, whose mother, Eunice Kennedy Shriver, started the Special Olympics. Maria's, Maria's father, Sergeant Shriver, started the um, Peace Corps. <laughs> oh. You know, I have witnessed the power of philanthropy uh -huh. and advocacy um, uh, on behalf of various organizations. I've seen the power of it. I've also seen what it does to the people who are doing it. It changes you, as you said. Yes. Uh, there is a much greater good, a much larger purpose in our life than for me, 
running around being chased by a guy with a knife and or the money I get from it because the money I get from it allows me to give the money away. Uh -huh. I am, I am, um, the older I get, the more interested I am in helping other people. Um, let's finish with a difficult question. Okay. Imagine I'm Laurie Strode and you have to thank her for this journey and say goodbye. What would you tell her? Um, I would thank her. I would just thank her. Because, as I said, because of her, I have a life that I never thought I'd have, ever, really. And so it's not something I would tell her as a secret. I would simply thank her because, she, you know, just through her own courage, I have become courageous. And that is a great gift and an unexpected gift. She was an unexpected friend um, for me, and I'm grateful to her. Gracias por su compañía. Y los esperamos en, pues en el cine para ver el final de esta saga. Gracias. Y, good, y, y goodbye, <laughs> y adiós. <laughs> adiós. Gracias.